Hi everyone, I'm Rachel Maxwell, and I'm here with E4D's co-founders, Katie Gibbs and Scott Findlay. Katie and Scott were also the lead organizers of The Death of Evidence, the 2012 nationwide event that was a rallying cry for thousands of scientists and their supporters in Canada. This month, we're commemorating the 10 year anniversary of this iconic moment, and who better to talk to than Katie and Scott. At the time, there were a lot of policies coming out of the federal government that were really concerning. They were cutting a lot of funding for science, muzzling government scientists, and cutting really essential evidence gathering sources of things like the Experimental Lakes area and the, the census. And I think it was really just this feeling that everyone in the science community that I knew, we were all so concerned and so outraged about what was happening. I think this was probably the straw that broke the camel's back, the scientific camel's back, was what I would characterize as um, a reduction or even a flight from evidence-informed decision-making. And even more egregiously, in my view and in the view of lots of other folks, the misrepresentation of the, of the state of evidence uh, as supporting for government decisions. It was incredibly inspiring. We went basically down, all down Wellington Street and then up to the steps of Parliament. So there was this moment where I was already at the steps of Parliament and it was still a line of people all the way down Wellington as far as the eye could see. I was massively ambivalent about it. And my ambivalence was for two reasons. First of all, it was unfortunate that this kind of public event was, was needed despite all of the media attention that had been put on these kinds of issues before. On the other hand, it was kind of fun. There were a lot of people there. It was very energizing. No. <laughs> Definitely not. At the time, we expected maybe a few hundred people max would show up. And so when we ended up getting thousands of people, it was very surprising. It's clear that it hit a nerve in some way, but we were definitely not expecting it at the time, no. Something that I've heard again and again is that the rally and then the work of E4D has inspired a lot of scientists who were younger scientists at the time, maybe in grad school, and it really inspired them to get into policy. I think that we're still seeing really alarming trends. Misinformation is, is so much more of a threat to our democracy now than it was in 2012. And then, of course, there's the coronavirus pandemic that I think was really a test of our science advice and science communication mechanisms. And I don't really think we're passing the test. An understanding that decisions informed by scientific evidence are more likely to achieve stated objectives, desired outcomes, and more likely to avoid undesired outcomes than those that are not informed by scientific evidence. And it's this tension, I think, that exists today more so than it did 10 years ago, actually. Where do I see us going in the future? I hope we'll be able to convince the public that having decisions appropriately informed by evidence in general and scientific evidence in particular is in their interests. Well, it affects every single aspect of your life. I think there's no shortage of opportunities to see how we're impacted by policy. I think what's maybe more challenging is showing people how they can actually have an impact on it. What in the world isn't science? <laughs> Right. Science is is pervasive in our lives, not just Canadians lives, but every every citizen of the planet. So the importance of science is incontrovertible. Science can come to the aid to solve important policy issues. It's not perfect, of course, but it's the best chance we have in a lot of these cases.